Last time, in the last video, we uh, introduced the k-means algorithm using a simple animation that uh, gives you an idea about how the algorithm works. The algorithm itself, the implementation, is also there. Um, but what we're going to do today is look at the theory behind this algorithm and in what sense it is guaranteed to work. So the main quantity that we're going to keep track of in the k-means algorithm is the RMSE, or root mean square uh, expected expectation. Um, and um, so at each time step of the algorithm, we have a set, I call it CT, for, with big C, um, the um, CT that is the set of K centroids that are used in that iteration. Okay, so it's a set of K vectors. Um, then the vector um, versus representative association associates each example, X, with a centroid, CI of X, which is basically the centroid uh, in CI that is closest to X. So the RMSE is the um, root mean squared error, and the, um, it's the square root of the uh, mean square distance between the point and its closest um, uh, centroid, or representative centroid. So this is basically the um, formula for it. Um, it's the square root of 1 over x is simply for taking the average of, of uh, these, um, all of these terms in the set of examples x. For each x, we take the difference between the vector x and its representative, and we take the norm of that squared. So that's the squared length of this distance. Okay, And that is what is defined to be the RMSE. So why is this uh, useful? Because what we can show is that at every step of the k-means algorithm, the RMSE cannot increase. It can either decrease or stay the same. So for step one, where we are updating the association, we are associating each point x with the closest representative. Well, in this case, it's pretty easy to convince yourself that if I represent, if I um, change the uh, uh, centroid that I'm using from something to something that is closer, I'm definitely going to decrease the uh, RMSE. The second step has to do with uh, the mean being the best um, centroid uh, for, for a set. Um, so you can basically easily show that for any fixed set of examples, so this subset that is associated with a particular centroid, the best centroid is to take the mean. Okay, so um, so basically, this is um, also a step that is not going to increase the uh, RMSE. So what we can say is that in each iteration of k-means, RMSE either decreases or stays the same. So um, a special case of that is if we think about the association of points to centers, right? So um, at every iteration, we are associating each example with its closest representative. If this association doesn't change between two iterations, then it's never going to change again, OK? It's going to stay the same uh, forever. So using these two uh, things, the decrease of the RMSE and the um, relation to sub subsetting the set of examples, uh, we can show that k-means has to converge after a finite number of iterations. And that simply follows from the fact that there is only a finite number of ways to partition the, um, the examples into, um, into k subsets. And uh, for each one of them, there is some RMSE. And so um, once, as if the RMSE decreases, then there must be uh, some point at which it will stop decreasing and um, stay the same forever. OK, that's not enough to basically just say that because it's, um, it's strictly decreasing that, um, that it will converge, right? Because um, think about it. You can have sequences of numbers that 
go, become closer and closer and closer to zero and are always above zero, but are never reaching a minimum. Okay, so that's uh, like a sequence that converges to zero, but is never equal to zero. So, but if you combine it with the fact that the number of possible configuration of the points is finite, then you actually get convergence. Okay. So what does this uh, tell us? It tell, tells us that um, um, what, we're, what the k-means algorithm gives us is a local minimum of the RMSE. Okay, so it basically tells us I'm going to find a partition of the points uh, in such a way that um, um, when I, if I calculate the means and reassociate the points, I stay with the same configuration. Okay, and so then from that point on, there's not going to be a change. However, that does not mean necessarily that they are that what we're getting to is the minimum of the RMSE. That would have been nice, but all we're guaranteed is that we're getting to something that is a local minimum. So, um, so k-means uh, does not converge to the global minimum of the RMSE, but it does necessarily converge to a local minimum. So, wouldn't it be nice if we could find, if we could have an algorithm that uh, converges uh, to the um, global minimum? Okay, so um, the news on that front are pretty uh, grim because what has been shown by Sandro Jaskupta a few years ago is that um, the problem of, um, of finding the global minima for even two means, just k equal two, is NP-hard. So um, for those of you that uh, don't know what NP-hard means, uh, it basically means that if we could do this problem efficiently in polynomial time, then we could do a whole slew of problems that for which we don't know uh, of a polynomial time algorithm. So to summarize, the mean distance between point and its closest centroid either decreases or stays the same forever. Okay, so this is a nice property of the k-means, and, um, and this is what we're going to um, look at um, when we're now going to analyze it. And k-means finds a local minimum, which can be much more worse than the global minimum. And finding the global minimum is actually very hard. We have no algorithm to even approximate it. Uh, next time, I'm going to uh, tell you of several other ways, other than RMSE, to uh, measure the performance of k-means. Uh, so to say how good is the result of k-means. And uh, at the end of that, we will come back to RMSE as really the only um, viable way to measure performance in practice. So I'll see you then.